All right, so one of the key ideas then, if animation is things changing over time, is how do we keep track of that time? Um, and there's two methods that we're gonna see a lot, um, and we're gonna cover both those in this example. The first is using frame count, and then the second is creating a timer that keeps track of, uh, of an interval and resets itself. So there's positives and negatives for sure to both of these examples. But what we're gonna do is on the left, we're gonna make sort of a blinking circle that um, is based on the frame count and on the right on a timer that we create. So um, in order to keep track of whether this should be on or off, we could give this like a light kind of, um, I'm gonna create a variable. The first one will be blink left and we'll set that equal to true. And then in our draw, we could, uh, we wanna be able to keep track of the frame count. And luckily P5.js has a built-in variable that does this. And we can see this uh, using console.log first. The variable is called frame count. So this is like width and that kind of stuff that's preset by P5.js. If I open my console and refresh, now we see this number running down there. And it's not very interesting because it's just an integer that gets bigger by one every single frame. Uh, but this is really a helpful way for us to control timing in a really simple way. Uh, there are some negatives, we'll talk about those, uh, but this will be using the frame count method. And we're also gonna here use a math operator that's a little confusing, but it's super awesome called uh, modulus. Let's see if I can remember modulus. I don't think that's spelled, is that spelled right? <laughs> you can yell at me if that's not right. Uh, but modulus is the remainder of division. And thinking about that is a little weird, but we can think of um, using it this way. So if frame count modulus 30 equals zero, then we can do something. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna divide frame count by 30. And if there's no remainder, if it's equal to zero, then that means we're in an increment of 30. So 30, 60, 90, 120, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so this lets us do something every 30 frames. And that's a good way to think about it. Um, and in this case, what we wanna do is switch blink left on and off, true and false. And we can do that using the not operator, the exclamation point. So now if um, blink left is true, then it's gonna be not true, which is false. And if it's false, it's gonna be not false, which is true. Lots of other ways you could write this, but I think this is like a really clean, simple way to do it. Then we wanna draw the shape. We can say if blink left, and there's a few ways that we could do this. You know, if we were just drawing a simple circle, um, it would be fine to do it here, but I'm gonna create a function called draw light. That's gonna let me have kind of like a glow to this. And um, my parameters I wanna pass to it are an X position, a Y position, and a color. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make this function down at the bottom here. And we're just gonna cruise through this because we're really not talking too much about this kind of stuff, but I wanna separate my red from the uh, green and blue from the color. And I'll show you why in a second. Uh, and then I wanna draw like a bunch of circles that have changing alpha values. So you can do that with a for loop. You know, and I've gone ahead and coded this ahead of time, but um, I want the diameter to change. I'll use map for that. It's between zero and nine. And my diameter will get smaller. I'm also gonna create an alpha value. That's why I separated my red, green, and blue. So I can make a new color with a changing alpha or transparency. That's also gonna be using map. And then I'm gonna fill R, G, B, and alpha, no stroke, and draw a circle at X, Y, and the diameter. Oh, do I have diameter somewhere? Is that a variable? Let's, where am I setting that? Oh, diameter's created here, sorry, brain fart. Okay, so now we should see an error. What is it telling us? Uh, we're missing a, a parenthesis after our argument list. Where is that? Uh, so it's telling me line 30. So reading error messages is a really helpful thing. They're not always, you know, the most descriptive of what's actually going on. But one thing the console is showing me here is that it's on line 30 of sketch.js. So I can see here, 
I screwed something up. Um, oh, I said let instead of for. This is what happens when you're talking and coding at the same time. And let's see, much better. Okay, so now let's refresh this. Now we see this light going off on and off every 30 frames. So to back up a step, we're using frame count and we're checking to see if dividing it by 30 equals zero, which will mean that it'll change on and off every 30 frames. We could change this to make it go faster. So every 10 frames would be quicker. Obviously every 100 frames would be much slower. And then I'm using a function um, if that variable is true to draw the shape. And I'm using you know, a function so I can make this kind of nice glowy looking shape. So frame count works great. It's really simple, but there is one problem to it. And that is that your animation is not always gonna run at exactly the same frame rate. If you're trying to do something complicated um, in your sketch, it may slow down or speed up. Or if you're using another program in the background, maybe a Photoshop or uh, your computer's trying to update itself or you have another web page open, um, that can make your frame rate lag and speed up. And that would mean this animation is not necessarily gonna happen smoothly. So another way to do this is to use um, the, uh, a timer. And the, the math for this is very simple, but the logic is a little confusing. Um, so let's make another light. Let's set this one to false. And I want two more variables. I want to have an interval. And this is going to be measured in milliseconds. A millisecond is a thousandth of a second. So there's a thousand milliseconds in one second. Um, and this is a very common unit of timing in computer stuff, computer programming. Um, so one second is a thousand milliseconds. A half second is 500. Two seconds is 2000. You'll get used to it as you practice with that. So 800 milliseconds is you know, roughly three fourths of a second. And then um, in order to know if enough time has passed for me to switch, I need to keep track of my previous time. So I'm gonna create a variable for that. Now I can't give it a value yet, or I probably don't want to because we wanna wait for our sketch to start. So just like setting the exposition to width divided by two is something we need to do in setup. I'm gonna say previous time equals millis over here. And what does millis do? So millis gives us the current time since the program started in milliseconds. So it's kind of like frame count. It keeps counting, counting, counting a thousand times a second. So this number gets really big, really fast. Um, but the nice thing is that milliseconds is tied to the clock on your computer. So it's always super accurate. Whereas frame count may be variable. It might speed up and slow down depending on how quickly your sketch is running. So the previous time is now set to the current time. And then in our drawdown here, we can check to see if enough time has passed. Um, so this will be our, let me add this here, this will be our millis version. And this is what our code is going to look, we're going to use an if statement for this. So if the current time is greater than the previous time plus the interval that we asked for, then it's time to reset the timer. And this logic is not mathematically complicated, but it's definitely a bit of a brain bender if you're not used to it yet. Um, again, basically what we're saying is if the current time, you know, you could imagine it's keeping track of time, uh, or maybe another way to say this is you have a previous time, the last time it was reset, plus the interval gives us a certain target time for when it's time to reset. And if our current time, which is running along here, passes that threshold, then it's time to reset. So just like our, I was just pointing to my screen, which you cannot see me do, um, just like our if statement up here where we reset that variable, we'll say if enough time has passed, blink right equals not blink right. And then also like this, if blink right, ah, blink right, draw light. So I'm using this function again because it makes it really easy with minus width divided by four height divided by two, and let's make it uh, yellow. So very similar idea to what we did above, but it's gonna allow for, whoa, it's freaking out. Why is that? Or, sorry, that's probably horrible on your eyes. Uh, oh, of course. So there's one more important thing that we need to do here. Um, just like if we're bouncing across the screen, we need to reverse the, um, the direction or the speed or whatever, um, here we need to then reset our previous time. We have to restart the timer. 
Um, and so, and we haven't done that. So now it's just like freaking out and blinking. So then we need to say prev time is the current time. So that resets our timer again. And now we should see, this looks really nice. Now it's blinking on and off at two different rates. This is probably gonna be pretty stable because there's not a whole lot going on here. Um, but I would say the millisecond version is much more reliable. It's harder to think about. Um, but it does also give you a lot more fine grained control. You're measuring to a thousandth of a second rather than 24 or 30 sec, you know, frames per second or something like that. Um, and yeah, so it gives you a lot more control. I think this idea of timing becomes really cool and interesting. So you could think about um, what happens if you have a whole bunch of these shapes that are all on different timers and they're coming in and out of phase or in and out of sync. Um, so a good example is the fireflies uh, down south, like in Tennessee, that do this huge thing every summer where they all kind of like synchronize in the mountains and then come in and out of sync and stuff like that. Um, there's also a really beautiful piece by Steve Reich um, called Music for 18 Musicians that explores this idea in real depth. And if you have time, please listen to it, maybe while you're coding. It's awesome, like ambient coding music. Um, and it's by 18 performers, and it deeply explores this idea of like synchronicity out of sync and what happens if you take simple patterns um, and overlap them and, and hear what kind of happens as a result. It's really cool. Um, so that's timing. And you could think about using these again to control all kinds of events in your animation.